Hi guys, it's Mrs. Hartford. I'm about to go on a visit to the Toledo Museum of Art in Toledo, Ohio, and I wanna take you with me. So I'm gonna take some videos and hopefully share some of the things that I see when I'm at the museum today. All right, let's go. This stone is actually from a tomb in Egypt. The hieroglyphics on this, or the little pictures, are actually the way that they wrote and communicated. So the hieroglyphics on this start with the words and offering, and then they describe names, titles, and accomplishments, as well as a dense collection of offerings. And this right here is the mummy of a cat. That's right, they mummified animals too. The Egyptians mummified millions of cats, birds, fish, even crocodiles and other animals. They buried them in the catacombs and cemeteries near the temples of the gods being honored. This mummified cat was actually the first object, not painting, but the first object donated to the Toledo Museum of Art. And then I turned around and saw this Greek pottery in these display cases. Now this Greek pottery was made by either using slip and drawing the pictures on it, that's where you get the black figures on it, or if there's red drawings on it, that means they painted the whole thing with slip and then scratched off their design. Their designs were usually pictures of everyday life or stories of war and heroes. The Greeks wanted to make something that was useful and beautiful. So the pots were used for things, but they were also created to be beautiful works of art. So I walked into this gallery and immediately saw artwork by Chuck Close. His artwork stands out because there are these ginormous portraits of people. I mean, look at how big this is compared to those girls standing over there. Here's another portrait by artist Chuck Close. Now watch what happens when we zoom in and get closer to this picture. Using a picture for reference, Chuck Close uses a grid to make the picture bigger and transfer it to the giant canvas he's working on. He then applies thousands of dabs of paint, allowing the grid to remain visible. That's why you can see kind of boxes in it. So viewed from a distance, the small painted squares kind of blend together to look like a realistic portrait. But then up close, they separate and it almost looks like an abstract painting where you can't even tell it's a person. This is a picture of me with the painting The Oath of the Horatii by artist Jacques-Louis David. Now the original painting is on display in Paris, but the Toledo Museum of Art has a smaller version of the same painting created by the same artist, David. So here's the one in Toledo, and let's put the one in Paris right next to it. Do you notice an object that's in one and not the other? Did you find it yet? If you look on the bottom right, there's a stick with some spun thread that's not in the original in Paris. So I am personally drawn to paintings that have a lot of texture in them. I like paintings that look like I could just go up and, and touch them and feel them. Obviously I can't do that because it's a museum, but I was really drawn to this painting where um, it's a painting of a ship kind of sailing in the water, but then the top corner of the painting has physically been removed from the canvas and you can see the wall behind it, kind of like it's folding in on itself. The bottom has this um, tar on it um, this black kind of bumpy substance covering up the bottom part of the painting. So I didn't know anything about this artist until I walked up to it and looked at the plaque on the wall and it was by an artist named Titus Kafar. So since being home from the museum I've done a lot more research into his work and watched a lot of his videos and if you haven't checked him out as an artist you definitely should. He addresses some major issues. Um, he references art history a lot but he does everything in a really respectful way and really gets you thinking with his artwork. So the last thing I want to take a close look at for my museum visit is this painting by, by Victor Vasarly. Um, he is really closely tied to the op art movement and this painting really shows that. Um, it's a great optical illusion. But I just want to take a second and look at the colors in this painting. Pay attention to the squares. Where do they get darker? Where do they get lighter? Pay attention to the circles. Where do they get darker and lighter? Look at all of the different values and the gradations or the slowly going from light to dark that he uses in his paintings and just by being great at mixing colors and blending colors and providing lots of different variations he gives this amazing op art effect to his painting where parts look like it's jumping out and parts look like it's really sinking back. Here's just a couple more pictures and videos from my trip to the TMA.
Thanks for tagging along with me today on my museum trip. If you have not been to the Toledo Museum of Art, you really need to try and go, or go to any museum for that matter. You do not have to be an expert in art to go. The museum provides plenty of information there, um, opportunities for you to learn. It is so fun to go, even if you have never seen anything that's in the museum before. Trust me. So get out and go to an art museum soon, okay? Bye.